Go ahead, chop it. So I don't really have anything planned for today, um, especially after back-to-back -back days of dinner buffets. So I guess I'm taking it easy. And um, by my definition of taking it easy, we're going to eat at Coco Ichibanya Curry House. Um, my first time to try it, but it's acclaimed curry that you can find um, almost the world over, I think. Much of Asia, you'll find Coco Ichibanyas everywhere. So um, I'm just taking this Coco Ichibanya. Actually, it's downstairs from where our condo is here in Bonifacio Global City or BGC in Metro Manila. Um, looking forward to trying it. Um, I got Dad because he's going to get the pork and vegetable curry and I'm going to get the pork and cheese curry with the level 2 hot and some chicken cutlet on the side. Food has arrived. And got, Dad got some pork cutlet and vegetable curry. Um, mild because poor dad can't handle spice. Haha, <laughs> lightweight. Um, I got some chicken cutlet on the side to go with my pork cutlet here just to compare. And I got the cheese curry. Um, which I think comes most recommended here as far as the specialties go. And I just stuck to second level hot um, just to try it. Um, I might be ruining that if it's not super spicy, because I love spicy. I'll, but I'll just take it and see if it's quite spicy. And of course, the cheese will probably mitigate that some. And uh, first things first, I'm going to go try this uh, curry out. Ooh, nice bits of cheese in there. I'm going to just try it without, or try as much as possible not to get the cheese. There we go. And let's try it out. Um, actually, I am ruining a little bit, not getting it a little spicier, but flavor is really on point, though. Um, can definitely see the hype behind it. Nice little warming heat, nothing too crazy. Um, the sauce itself is really all about that curry seasoning. Um, nothing really added to it um, at all, which is really nice. Um, probably get some, some of that cheese in here see what kind of element that plays off that cheese is quite satisfying um, with that spicy curry um, really really nice um, adds more creaminess to it and um, well let's try to marry all the components now together so I'm gonna take some of this cur pork katsu seems nice and crunchy with some rice, some cheese, some curry, and some pork katsu. Juicy pork katsu cutlet marries very well with the curry. And rice is just perfectly cooked as well. Not super soft, just the right softness really. And of course the cheese and the curry just really quite a luxurious curry for something that you can get, you know, uh, it's, it's quite ubiquitous. Um, yeah, it's very, very nice. I'll mention that just because it says hot on the menu, if you haven't tried Coco Ichibanya, don't be afraid to up the ante a little bit. Um, this is quite a, a gentle curry. Um, so probably, you know, you can try to test your limit really and get like an extra hot or, you know, or, or spicy, maybe like 5 to 10. I'm tempted to try 1 out of 10 and just to see. Um, but at 2, it's just nice warming curry. Relatively mild for my liking, but very, very good. Flavors are on point. And you have to love the customization of this curry house. Um, 
And probably I should have gotten a little more extra rice to go with this, but what better really than to drown out your curry, with leftover curry, with more chicken. There we go. All right, got that properly segmented. I'm gonna get some of this chicken cutlet curry now. Nice cut of chicken. I prefer the pork just because of the extra juiciness, but that's not gonna disappoint you at all. It's very, very good. I forgot to mention this cheese is a perfect um, state of meltiness, really. Um, leave some strands up your mouth, really, when you're eating it. Um, Again, really satisfying. I think, to your tip, you should probably order a little more rice, maybe, you know, 350 milligrams, and then get some. And again, if you like spice, I would probably go at least a three or a four on the level. And of course, if you can really handle your spice, go for that perfect 10. Why not? Well, that curry went down quite easily. Um, quite addicting, actually. Um, I could go for another... Uh, plate. The only thing is, tonight there's a main event here, um, especially if there's crispy pot on the line for dinner. So, exercising extra discipline here. Um, I'm just gonna say, um, really good plate of curry, but bigger and better things to come. For our last night here in um, BGC or Metro Manila, um, we're gonna eat the best pork dish I think in the Philippines, or at least that I could think of. Um, it's a crispy pata that you can cut with a popsicle stick, and it's quite famous. Um, if you've watched Andrew Zimmern's uh, Delicious Destinations, he spotlights the crispy pata that they serve here. Um, it's, you can chop it with a popsicle stick. It's that tender, and it's that crispy. Um, basically, every time I come to the Philippines, I always get it. Um, and it's always a dish I always think about when I come back to the Philippines. So, um, looking forward to it as usual. And uh, I'm going to be starting off with some cerveza negra, which is by San Miguel. Um, basically, it's a black lager. Um, and of course, that has a traditional San Miguel pale pilsen. Um, I tend to like the cerveza negra more just because I'm a stout drinker and um, really could prefer dark beer with a uh, complex coffee flavor, that's just me. Every time I come here, I always get this appetizer. It's a salted egg chicharron. It's uh, three kinds of crackling here. Um, chicharron bulaklak, um, which is kind of intest pork intestine ruffle fat, and um, pituca and um, chicken skin. All in salted egg, and for good measure, there's some salted egg sauce here. One of my favorite things to get here is an appetizer. So I got one of the cracklings here and I'm gonna just um, spoon some of this salted egg sauce here. You can never go wrong with salted egg in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And there's one big bite. Nice and crispy and creamy as far as like those cracklings go. The salted egg accentuates that. And more creaminess. There's a hint of spice I'm getting from like maybe a hint of like chai chili in there that I'm not seeing. But yeah, this is the perfect bar snack to get things started here before our big monster crispy pata. The salted egg sauce is really addicting too because it adds vinegar. Vinegar and a little bit of spice. Um, Crack, it cuts into the richness a bit and makes it really interesting the flavor. Um, very good start here in this appetizer. And again, one of my favorite things to get here. I'm gonna chase these cracklings with some beer now. Nice bit of chocolatey, um, some nice chocolate coffee notes in that. Um, nice carbonation, a little fuzz there to um, keep it from getting too thick in the mouthfeel. And nutty aftertaste. Um, I still think the pale pilsen goes really good with fried food. Much better, a little bit better than your cerveza negra, but for a little bolder flavor, I like going with this black lager here. Go ahead, chop it.
And as you can see, the pork is super tender. Chop it with just a popsicle stick. Um, let's see. So there's a special process to how they um, cook this crispy pata. So if you look very closely, the black pepper seasoning is gone straight to the bone, right? So what you're going to taste here is not just the crispiness, but the flavor throughout, like the garlic and the black pepper really seeps in through the bone, right? I mean, I'm barely moving my popsicle stick, I guess. Um, and there you go, making mush out of this. Um, that's how super tender it is. Um, so from what I've read or what I've seen is that what they do is they boil the meat for about an hour and a half. Um, in some adobo seasoning, which is soy sauce, bay leaf, um, black pepper, and garlic. And then they let it air dry for 24 hours. And then when you order it, they deep fry it for about 15 to 20 minutes until you get this really crispy golden brown skin. Let's move in real close here. Uh-huh. That juicy portion there. All right, no time to waste here as far as like showing you the features of this crispy pata. And I'm just gonna try just the skin with uh, no sauce at all, no sauce. Yeah, that's ultra crackling there. Um, it has like the consistency of like a chicharron, as if it had been, you know, like fried chicharron rind. But then it has a bit of body, so it's not necessarily airy. Um, it's, you're just appreciating the thick skin of the pig, uh, or of the uh, pork knuckle here. Um, or that's exactly what it is, a little pork knuckle. Now, I'm gonna get some of this meat and meat here. And just go in with no sauce at all. No sauce. And here we go. Really tender meat. Um, and you get the hints of, of the, the marinade of the garlic and the black pepper and it really permeates through the flesh so now i got the part of the meat the skin with some meat straight to the bone and i'm gonna dip this kind of like a taco i guess into the sauce see what kind of bite we get And uh, away we go. Perfect every time. Um, that's really the bite. Best meat really is close to the bone with the nice tender bits, um, the less lean bits. And then get some of that crispy skin, put it like a taco, I guess you can say. And then get some of that soy sauce. It's got some soy sauce and um, shallot in there. And Really, you don't need anything else. And like I said, these are the only two things I ever order here. The crispy cracklings and salted egg, and then the crispy pata. That's all you need. They have a big menu. You can have um, crispy pig head, and then they have um, pork ribs. Um, I'm sure they're all good. They're, I'm sure they're all great. But this, 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 these two, stars of the show. We're gonna zoom in on the skin again and just look at the black pepper seasoning right where that piece of fat is underneath that skin. All well integrated. You probably don't even need sauce for this bite as well. That's a crackling that never seems to end, but I mean. 
eventually, like all good things, they end, but... Yeah, you don't want that to end. There's no real civilized way to eat this leg, so I'm just gonna take this bone. Um... Oh boy, barely anything on it. Except this, um... Fatty end here. This comes right off, so you know what? Let's save that for later. Grab some meat, grab some skin, about an equal portion. It doesn't get tiring. Usually, full disclosure, whenever I eat like any heavy, these heavy pork, pork dishes, Filipino pork dishes, whether it be lechon, crispy pata, or sisig, or whatever, or dinuguan, so usually what happens is, after like five or six bites, I get tired of eating it. But with this, no. You get such a wonderful textural contrast, and the seasoning to the bite, you get pretty much a, um, everything comes all together. Um, the taste, the texture, um, it makes you want to keep having more and more and more until, you know, your stomach can't really hold any room anymore. So I just had a thought. What if, take some of this crispy pata. Oh, this is a really fatty piece. Um, a really fatty piece. Um, break off, break off. Okay. Why don't we dip this in some salted egg sauce? Um, generously too. Put this on the rice. Or just a little, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Oh my, even better. Um, hey, that's probably overkill, but... I think that egginess with a little bit of that vinegar, a little of that garlic, extra garlic in that sauce. Phenomenal. And now... Trying to finish this, but now we are down to some, some of this leg here. Now this is good eating. Messy eating too. The pig's foot. This bone, like I said, barely anything on it. I mean, I didn't even touch it. And then this part here with, oh boy. Part of this foot here. With some cartilage bits in there. Take some of that from the soy. Hallmark of a really good crispy pot is if that bottom piece of the heel or the pig's foot nice and crispy, the meat the meat is crisped up, crisped up, and you really get that black pepper, garlic, soy, bay leaf seasoning right to that part. Phenomenal. Okay, next up I got some of this pig's foot. And the knuckle. What do you want to go for? Pig's foot or not? Or this end piece? You're not saying anything because he's gone to food coma. Um. Lots of good bits in that one. Ooh, look at that. Right? Comes right off. And by the way, this crispy pata, they say on the menu, serves between three to five people, and it's just the two of us. Um, and it's the reason why we only order these two things, because in the past, we couldn't even finish it with, you know, just the two of us. So, yeah, dad's just claimed the pork knuckle, or pig's foot. All for himself. Okay, so he's going to get all the gooey gelatinous bits in there. All right, I'm just gonna settle for this wonderful piece. Oh, 
This is actually another pig's foot. Part of the pig's foot. I mean, another part of the pig's foot. They didn't grow one on the table here, but. Back to the skin. This is the only thing I could get on camera. Yeah, you don't want to skip all these gooey bits. I mean, it's part of the fun of eating the knuckle. I'm gonna plow through this and, you know, get on to the next thing. And just two major pieces left. One with the crispy bits. And then one with the more meat and more gelatinous bits, which I think I'm gonna take instead. <clears throat> I actually think we're gonna finish this. Stay tuned to find out. <clears throat> I don't think I need to tell you what you're looking at. Um. Because you probably made the inference that they boxed our leftovers. But no, seriously. We ate the entire thing. That's all that remains. And lots of tissue you had to use. Yeah. And by the sound of my voice, yes, I slipped into a food coma. Um... And get this, this crispy pato that you is a must have when you come to Manila. I mean, this is worth the airplane ticket for, all right? Just like it is for Spiral Buffet. I mean, it's a religious experience onto its own. I mean, you'll have good lechon everywhere you go. You'll have good sisig wherever you go in the Philippines. I'm pretty confident of that. But I tell you this. You won't find any better crispy pata than you would here. Here. I mean, you can try. I mean, um, usually you gotta tear into a knife and you always get these lean pieces that are kind of boring because they've been, you know, fried to a crisp and nuked to hell. Um, and they just don't taste nearly as good. But this, every bite, I guarantee. Absolute awesomeness. Um, yeah. And all this, because that crispy pata costs less than 15 US dollars. One five US dollars. Easily, this will go for $30 in the States. You do the math and tell me if that airplane ticket the Manila isn't worth it. You're looking live at a goat that is live, but in a few minutes, it's really soon to make its maker.